Hello, my name's Elizabeth. Welcome back to my channel. We're going to be looking at grouping data using Power Query today. We're going to talk about what grouping data is, some use cases. We're even going to go through a practical example of how I would use the grouping data function in Power Query. And if you're not sure what grouping data is, follow along. I've got the data set linked in the description and you can practice along. Let's join me over on my computer. Okay, now that we're back on the spreadsheet, let's check out our data set. So today we've got a fuel miles per gallon data set uh, for city and highway for a bunch of different vehicle make models class for a bunch of different years. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna group this data together so that we can grab averages from uh, average fuel miles per gallon, depending on the class of the vehicle and depending on the year the vehicle was made to compare across the classes. Now, you could do this in Excel with a bunch of sum if formulas. There's a ton of other ways to do this, but we're going to use this, do this using Power Query today. And I'm going to show you why Power Query is also my preferred method. It's just clean, nice, and it's easy for the end users to use. So first things first, let's get this into Power Query. First thing, let's make this a table, Control T. This asks me if my table has headers, and that, that is automatically checked, so we're good to go there. Press OK. If you don't want to press Control T, you can always go to the Insert tab and click on Table once you select the entire table. And now let's get it into Power Query. Click anywhere in this table. Let's first rename this Fuel. Perfect. Now let's click anywhere in the table. Go to Data and select From Table and Range right here. This gets us into the Power Query Editor. Now you can see that our entire table is loaded in here. Grouping means that if the same value is there for the entire column, it's going to make one row for that column. If we group multiple columns and the same value is there, it's going to make one row for that combination of, of year in make. So for example, really quickly, if I just group year, I click on year right here and I press the group by button. And this one, very simple, it's just going to do year and account, press OK. It's going to bring all of my data down to one, one row per year. That's not what we want at the end of the day, but that's, that's the basics of grouping. So let's go back and we're going to do this by year, make, model, class, drive, fuel type. Now, how I, did I select all of these at once? I hold the control key down. So I click here, hold the control key, click, 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 perfect. Now we don't want these two because these are going to be our aggregate functions and I'm going to show you how to do that in the grouping. We want to average these across this grouping. So we clicked on here, now we're going to go to group by. It automatically knows that I want to group by in an advanced, not the simple grouping. If I were to just click here and click group by, it'll ask me, do you want to do the basic grouping or advanced? And I want to select advanced. But since I already selected all of these, I can just click on group by and it'll pre-input these columns right here. Now down at the bottom, I want to add two aggregates. I want to add one for city MPG and highway MPG. So let's let's put that in here city mpg and my operation i've got a bunch of different options for this operation i want the average of this grouping of and i have to select which column i want it to refer to so this i want the average of the city mpg for this grouping i've selected and again i'm going to add one more aggregate you can add a ton of aggregates you can add as many as you want i'm going to call this highway mpg and again, I want the average of the highway MPG. And I'm going to select OK. As you can see, we no longer have this vehicle ID. I just over here, I clicked back a step. I'm going to click forward to our current step. And we've got averages for both city and highway MPG now. And I can clean this data up. I'm going to highlight both of these. Again, I click the Control button to highlight two. And I'm, I'm selecting the column header to highlight the entire column. And I'm going to go to transform up here and go over to rounding. And I want to round to two decimal places and select OK. So that'll kind of clean up my data set a little bit for me. Now I'm going to do two more things here. So my objective is, is to return this data set, but also have average city miles per gallon 
for the vehicles within the same class and fuel type so I can compare across pretty easily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my query and I'm gonna make a copy. So I'm gonna right click, press duplicate. You can see it'll just say fuel to there. I'm gonna double click in here to rename this. I'm gonna rename this to class as this is what I'm grouping by. If you have a lot of different queries, it is really important to have a good name so you understand where these queries are going to and coming from and, and how they all interconnect. So at this point, I'm gonna go back and I can go back and kind of retrace my steps and I can make this kind of easy for myself. So I'm gonna go back to the grouped rows. I'm gonna double click in here and I'm gonna get rid of some of these columns. That means my grouping, my data set, is gonna be smaller at the end of the day because I am removing some of these variables. I'm gonna remove make for this. I'm gonna remove model and I'm gonna re remove drive. My three functions that I'm going to group by is year, class, and fuel type. And I wanna compare across these three variables. And then I'm gonna select okay. And as you can see, I kept my exact same highway miles per gallon and city miles per gallon aggregate functions here. I didn't want to change that. And my next step, my round, my rounding function will still work because I didn't change that. A lot of the times if you change steps in the middle, your secondary or your, your steps afterwards will have issues because you've changed some of the naming and it doesn't know what to refer to anymore. So do be, do be aware of that, but in this case, uh, we don't have that problem. So now we've got by year, class, and fuel type, the average city miles per gallon and highway miles per gallon. We're gonna go back to the fuel and we're gonna add this class back to this this query right here by using a merge function. So I'm gonna click anywhere in here. I'm gonna to go to the home tab. I'm gonna select merge. And we're gonna choose the query to merge it to. So I wanna merge it to class. You can actually merge it to yourself. There is situations where, where I have used that, but um, not super often. And we're gonna match these columns up. As you can see, we've got year, We've got class and we've got fuel type we want to match up. We don't want to match up these two columns right here because this is going to be our output and this is this is going to be a different number than the individual row data. This is going to be a group data. So we don't want to merge these two over here. We just want to merge the year. So I clicked up here and clicked down here. Now at this point, I got to click the control button again to continue merging multiple columns. So I control, click class. Then I come down here, I'm still holding control, click class. As you can see, there's a two reference number here. You wanna make sure they're aligned correctly. I'm gonna click fuel type as well. Now, as you can see, if I accidentally click something else down here, it'll align the wrong one. So I can hold control down. I'm continuing to hold control. I can uncheck it and I can click the right one. Now down here, it gives you kind of a helpful hint to show you, hey, are we matching correctly? Because if I went like this, and you can see down here, it's giving me a caution symbol, and that's a quick indicator to show that, hey, my queries aren't matching up correctly. But here I've got my three matched, and I've got all of my rows have matching rows in the other query. There are situations where not all of your rows need matching rows, and that's okay. But in this case, they all should match and we're gonna keep a left outer join query. That means we're keeping all from this fuel queries and we are joining the matching from the class. So I'm gonna select okay. Now it pops up just like this over here and I can press this little expand button. I don't wanna expand everything because I already have a lot of this information. So I just wanna expand the city miles per gallon and the highway miles per gallon. And this check mark down here says use original column name as prefix. I actually wanna keep that selected. A lot of the times I get rid of it, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna put the class dot city miles per gallon dot highway miles per gallon. And that's important because we wanna distinguish this between our original city and highway miles per gallon. We can quickly in here check if this query is behaving as we want it to. So we look really quick and within the same class, within the same year, so we'll look at mini compact cars. 
we should have the same numbers and it should change and we should get new numbers when we change classes in years. So a quick glance, this query is working how we want it to. Now let's load it to our table and put it in a report form. So close and load two. I'm gonna select only create connection for both queries and then load the second, the, just the first query because I don't need this class query loaded. If I wanted to see it, I could load it as well, but I'm gonna create a new sheet. I'm gonna call this sheet MPG comparison. And now I'm gonna load my fuel query back onto the sheet. So I'm gonna click onto my fuel, my fuel query. As you can see, there's the query and connection panel popped up on the right hand side. If you don't see that, you can go up to the data tab and click on queries and connections and that panel will pop up. So right click, press load to, load to pivot table, and I'm gonna put it on cell 14 and I'll show you why. And now that we have the pivot table here, I'm going to put the make, the model, the city MPG into the values, highway MPG into the values, and I'm gonna put the class of the city right next to the class of the vehicle, and same with the highway. I need to change some stuff around in here. I'm gonna highlight all these and double click. And I'm gonna fix it just a little bit. I'm gonna click inside and I'm gonna change this from a sum to an average. And I'm gonna change the number format to two decimal places. And I'm gonna do the same for the rest of these. So click inside, number format, to okay. And we're gonna change to an average. Average, and I'm gonna change this wording a little bit. Average class, city MPG. Normally I like to clean these up a little bit. A, V, and G, okay. And we're gonna go to this one as well, same thing, average. I'm gonna change the number format. A, V, G. And one more, we're gonna do average class. Highway, MPG, okay. And we're gonna change this number format. Okay, and make sure we select average. Perfect. Now I'm gonna put some slicers on top so I can filter down by what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna put year, class, and fuel type. As you can see, I've got these slicers up here now. I've got year, class, I'm gonna select right here, and fuel type. I can press control to select all of them, and I'm gonna make them a little bit smaller. I'm gonna select the year I want, I'm going to select the class I want, and select the fuel type. And you can see that across the make models, you can see the average city highway and average highway for that year or that year and class as well. To make this a little bit more visually appealing, we can also click in here, go to a conditional format. We can apply color scales just kind of as a quick indicator. So I just applied the color scale to the first value up here. I'm gonna go up here, go to manage rules. I'm gonna double click in here and select this first option for all cells showing average city miles per gallon value and apply, press OK, and I could do this to the rest of them all the way across too, but this just gives me a quick indicator of the high miles per gallon and a quick comparison too. Especially if I wanna look among different classes of vehicles, I can see a quick comparison of this vehicle's average miles per gallon versus the average in the class miles per gallon. And I can do the same thing with the highway, and I could put conditional formatting on the rest of this as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please follow along, subscribe for more Excel videos. Thanks.